15th of February 2020. Today the interview will be conducted by Sharina Gulzar on behalf of the Centre for Indian Classical Dance on behalf of the Poshak Puralek Oral History Project. To start off, please can I take your name and how are you associated with CSED? My name is Akasha Dedra and I've been associated as a student and disciple of Srimati Neemaji since I was eight years old. And when and where were you born and what is your background? I was born in Birmingham and my background is I trained in Kathak and Bharatnatyam in Kathak with uh, Neema Devi and Bharatnatyam and Chitralika Bura. Now I have my own company and I'm the artistic director of AOC, which is predominantly a solo company which is now going into group ensemble repertoire. Fantastic. And what has been your involvement over the years with the costumes and productions at the Centre for Indian Classical Dance? It's really funny when you speak about the costumes. I remember the first time I opened up all the costumes from the studio. It was like opening up a treasure trove, uh, you know, frozen time capsules and moments, uh, almost like um, bringing pictures to real life because I'd seen all these costumes on photographs and videos. But there was a point where I had to sort through all the costumes and I literally filled uh, Didi's studio up with the costumes. And even now, if you ask me the colour, texture or shape of a costume, I'm able to close my eyes and tell you this is a colour, texture and shape. Because I felt like the costumes also became an integral part of the fabric, so to speak, of the organisation. I felt, you know, there's certain costumes that if I pick up and look at right now, they take me back to that point in time that they were used, you know, when the when classical Indian dance was really flourishing over here in Leicester. And tell me about a costume or a production that you particularly remember or being a part of that stuck with you. So many. I think I actually had one of the costumes in my garage since I was 10. Uh, which was funny because I still fitted into the costume not not until too long ago. And I was a big fan of the colour of the costume. It's like a turquoise colour. And there's something, even I have hundreds of costumes myself, but there's something about that costume which still intrigues me. The colour still feels as if, as if it still speaks to me. And I used that in the tarana that we did when I was eight or nine years old in the Haymarket on the main stage. Because I wore the costume with such pride and such dignity and I danced each movement as if it was something like as if the movement itself was a form of worship for me so I think that's a performance that stuck with me and the costume and the other costume I think uh, I sort of clearly remember was when I became a young adult a 16 year old boy and we were doing Vium the production and we were all wearing white and we had this sort of dhoti style of a costume uh, made out of satin material and everyone were the same colour and same style. So I feel like that's something I, that, that has stuck with me because that was a point in time where I was leaving school and I was I had decided I was going to full-time dance. So um, it's something that every time I touch that satin material, I think I still have a sash, everything comes flooding back. It, all it takes is a touch. And were you ever involved in any of the designing, any of the making of the costumes? Well, there was uh, when we did uh, what was called Imagine Sparks. Um, the people center, me and Priti Auntie, Priti right at that. We got lots and lots of material and we started to design and mix and match. So that's where it all started in terms of my designing clothes. And what do you feel is the significance of the costumes and cultural attire in South Asian communities and across Leicestershire? I think costume and attire um, it speaks so loudly of culture, of background, of heritage. Each thread each piece of silk or cotton actually has come from uh, some form of deep uh, thought process because every colour, I feel, that signifies something for us culturally. Like in Holi, we would wear white, so when colours are thrown, we're full of, you know, these multitude of colours. When a bride gets married, she wears red because the red signifies a new uh, beginning of life or life itself, the colour of our blood. So I think colours have such a huge impact on our culture and our heritage. And I think dance has a way of uh, amplifying that sense of colour and that sense of festivity through its uh, costume, and especially Kathak, because it comes from such a, a rich tradition. 
and background. And um, it's one of the few uh, forms that blends Mughal aesthetic with Hindu or Vedic or Indian aesthetic because of this combination of what they call the Ganga Javna Tezi, you know, these two rivers which mix. So I feel like in that sense, the costumes that uh, have been associated with CICD uh, have played a huge role in sort of representing the South Asian culture and background and where we come from and where we're going to. And I think it's really important to be able to preserve that. We're coming to a generation where touch feels like it's lost its importance and live visual feels like it's fading away. You know, people used to go to the theatre to watch these shows I and mean, these were the events that happened. And that's where you would see these colours, these costumes, this sense of tradition coming to life. And we're losing that now. So I feel like there should be some way, and I think this is a fantastic way, of uh, preserving culture which is far older than we are and what we've been doing in this country. And I think it's a, it's a way of marking the journey of the South Asian which has left India might be via Africa and now to England. So it's almost like these clothes have been a pathway for us. You know, the clothes which come from northern India are different. The clothes which come from southern India are different. According to your religion, they're different. According to your caste, they're different. So I think they play a huge role in giving one an identity. And I think that's important. We are showing different forms of identity and how they can be cohesive and live together. One last question. So I understand when Nili Maji started CICD in the early 1980s, a lot of the culture, a lot of the heritage, the, the forms of clothes, the types of clothes, she brought to the UK. And it was something very, very new. These days, even though it is quite recognised, with Bollywood now so westernised and the classical culture sort of somewhat being lost, how important do you think it is to maintain those cultures for the younger generations? I think I'm quite a nostalgic person in general. I like to look at the past. I feel I have more of a connection with the past than the, than the present or the future. And that's just me as an individual. I mean, I'm sure decades before CICD also came to being an organisation, there was, in India itself, a fashion, style, aesthetic has changed era after era after era, whether it was the Vedic period, whether it was the Mughal period, whether it was the Darbars of the uh, Maharajas in Rajasthan. So aesthetic has always changed. So I think what makes it special is the fact that we're able to preserve some of it, to give people like me a sense of nostalgia, a sense of um, joining the dots of history together. And I think preserving these sort of items that were brought to Leicester and had played such an important, integral uh, role for South Asian dance and culture, I think is really important because it's through these things that future generations of dancers will look at and say this is where our now our dance form, i.e. Bollywood or whatever, has come from. You know, it started with a grassroots organization like CICD and things have branched out in different ways. And yes, things are becoming westernized, definitely. But there's also nothing wrong with that. I mean, to be honest with you, one can't visualize, I can't visualize myself walking around in a Gatiawari, Chinese, in Angria, you know, like a village costume. Even though I love it, it doesn't for me fit in with this era. I think one has to move with the times. However, I think it's also important to be able to acknowledge the past because when you look back, that's only when you're able to move forward. Thank you so much, Akash. It's been a pleasure interviewing you today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.